Hi, I'm DJ Six Smith. You're watching The Sit Down, hanging out today with Nicole Kang. What's up, Nicole? How are you? Hi, I'm really good. How are you? I'm doing well. It's a weird time right now, but yeah. just making the best of it. That's all we can do at this point, right? Yeah, I think everybody's in that boat. And I, I feel like I've seen so much innovation during this time, like the way that I'm talking to you in your home. I think it's really exciting, actually, just like a wave people finding new ways to connect and viewers sort of allowing a more casual setting. It's just really nice to be able to talk to people and, and, and try and, and move forward. I think it's nice to innovate. I think it's nice to reflect as well. And I'm sure you've had some time to think about all the stuff you've done. So when you think about your career at this <laughs> point, like you've done some cool stuff. Like why don't we start with Batwoman? What's been the coolest part of that experience for you? I think still the coolest thing is me sort of fangirling Gotham, growing up watching Batman, The Dark Knight being so iconic in my lifetime, in my relationship sort of with my father. We used to like watch movies every weekend. And then when I read a script and it says, you know, Gotham or GCPD or, you know, Commissioner Gordon or we refer to the Joker or we refer to Bruce, you know, he's sort of in our past and in our, you know, lore. It's, it's wild to me. It just takes this world to another epic level that we connect to so many Batmans of the past and, and the future and, we expand our world in sort of that way. Like I, I don't know that that part is the coolest part to me. It's really nice that you have this world already established and then you guys can build off of it. So when you think about right. just, just your footing in that world, when did you feel comfortable with the part, comfortable with the show? Like just kind of take me through your whole journey with it. Well, what's really awesome about Greg and Sarah and Caroline is that from the beginning, their intention was to sort of individualize our Gotham. How is our Gotham? We've seen Gotham so many times. We know it's dark. We know it's falling apart. We know sort of our viewers have seen it before, but how is this going to be different? And and it came with a sort of diverse set of characters. It came with characters that you've never seen in Gotham mm -hmm. before. You're gonna wanna tune into the show because you've never seen, you know, potentially you've never seen Mary Hamilton and you've certainly never seen Mary Hamilton who looks like me. And there were theories like we did combine sort of Bette Kane and the Mary Hamilton comic character to, to create the Mary that you sort of know in, in the Batwoman show. And then on top of that, I, you know, being Asian American, I come into it with a set of facts with a set of experiences that you've never seen before. And I have a mother who has had to sort of grow up and have this history in Gotham rise to the top. She's in charge of Hamilton Dynamics. We're not really sure what that is. She's got tons of secrets, a ton of poise. And then I get to be the millennial version of myself and sort of the youngest person on the show and bring a lot of youth and levity and comedy and heart you know bottom line heart and and through the 20 episodes that we're gonna get through like you I I it's really warmed my heart that the fans have really warmed up to Mary and and feel for her because she sort of plays the part of the audience. Like she learned, she's the last one to know that Batwoman is her identity. She, you know, has this huge call to action uh, of Batwoman in, in episode 17. And, you know, could have been the Crows military Sophie, could have been our villain. It could have been anyone else, but it's sort of this average citizen of Gotham you know, asking for help. And I, and I think that it makes her really special. Yeah. You hit on a lot of really important things there. And I think it's so cool what you guys do in your show, what is happening in tele television just across the board. It's like all these different faces, all these different types of parts. 
And that has real serious impacts on people. So can you think of an example of like just you being on that show playing Mary Hamilton and how that's impacted, you know, people you've interacted with on social media or in real life? Yeah, well, first of all, I see all the tweets, all the fan mail, all the Instagram messages of, you know, Asian men and women being like, oh my God, I feel like I can participate in this show. It's so cool. And that is beyond moving. It's one of those things and one of those moments where you're like sort of connected to purpose, like a greater purpose, you know, like bigger than this show. Uh, bigger than sort of me where I'm like I know I'm in exactly the place I'm supposed to be in uh, when when you read a message like that it's hard because you're always grinding you know to get to where you're getting to get to where you are you know like interviewing the people that you want to interview and things like that like you have to work so hard it's like nose to the ground for so long and it's nice to take a few moments where you sit back and you can sort of enjoy the work that you've done to get here and seeing those messages are really like those are those moments for me so I have a little bit of a ritual like I definitely like open all the mail before um I'm like eating my breakfast or my meal right when I get on set and I read everything everyone has to say and I take time to respond and then and then I start to prepare for the day. Like it's, it's a nice, like, it's a really nice ritual I have, yeah. That stuff goes a really long way. And like you said, like, it's an absolute grind just to get to the point that you're at. So why don't we go back a little bit? Like, okay. what does the early part of your career look like where you're just kind of popping on to different shows? Like, what were some of the most important stops for you where you're like, okay, I can do this. I'm an actor now. It's gonna take some time, but I'm starting to do my thing here. Yeah, first of all, I'm a huge theater girl. I what I like just moved um, a month ago to LA nice. but I was in New York for you know eight years and it feels like longer but I sort of had my whole coming of age story I would argue like there in New York and a huge part of the identity of New York is the theater scene I was I'm a lifetime member of the actor studio that was something that was really important to me again connecting to the history there connecting to Strasburg and Stella Adler and Stanford Meisner and all of the people who established that like working technique of acting and what that meant and the robust nature of a Shakespeare play wanting to really I flexed my muscles, you know, I was like, I can do anything if I can do a Shakespeare play. And so I worked really hard, you know, with the Bedlam Theater and, and, and working my way through the theater scene there and training, training and, you know, going to the actor's studio every week. Uh, Alec Baldwin is often modern. Ellen Burstein is there. It just feels like a rich with history. So that's definitely what I was doing the whole time. And then shows like Orange is the New Black. I got on there and I was like touching everything in the chair. And I was like, oh my God, this feels like a moment (laughs) in history. Like, this is really cool. I'm joining so many people, so many of my brothers and sisters sort of that, that have gotten opportunity because of this show. I mean, we never saw the diversity like we saw on that show. And I remember when it came to Netflix and I remember I was like, that's the show I binge to get over a uh, sort of a, a breakup, and I and it and it was really iconic for me. So that was a really important show for me. And then I hopped on. You know, I was always at Alan Cummings Bar, like doing karaoke, um, doing a jazz night with Lance, his pianist. Like I I I adore him and what he's done for the community down in in Alphabet City, Lower East Side. And then I hopped onto Instinct, which was a CBS mm-hmm. yep. show. Yeah, that he was in, great procedural. And I was able to like put back on my ice skates. Mm-hmm. I was a figure skater when I was growing up. That's and cool. then, yeah, I got to train at Chelsea Piers and uh, do this really fun scene with him and, and um, and his co-star, Boyana. Uh, oh yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, uh, she was in Itania, mm-hmm. and she iconic. And then it all wrapped together, and 
And that was a really cool moment for me. So I think just running into all of these icons in New York and hopping onto shows that I'd heard of, that I'd right. watched, uh, was sort of the moment when I was like, oh, okay, I'm in it. You know, it, and, you know, and I, I sort of started to, like, figure it out a little bit. And I, um, and then I joined the cast of You. And that was really interesting. And I think sort of historical uh, in its own right, because we started out on a network. We got, um, didn't get picked up for a season two. Then we got picked up by Netflix. And all of a sudden, 40 million people crazy watched a show that I, you know, was on. And it was crazy. The energy was crazy. The cry sort of from this, the world was crazy. And it became a study on, you know, streaming versus, you know, what does that mean? Oh, we can give it more life if a network sort of doesn't find a home for it or it doesn't quite fit the identity of the network. You know, there, there are more places for things to go and people to see. And that was a really interesting study. And then, yeah, and then Greg and Sarah also were producing Batwoman. Mm -hmm. It was the first script I read of pilot season. And I remember being like, oh, please, this fits me like a glove. I remember thinking it was easy. And yeah, and I just did sort of an Instagram takeover last Sunday for sort of the penultimate season. And I was just going down memory lane because I was like, I remember I filmed myself. Like I have this video journal of me getting the part because I'm like crying and I'm, oh my gosh, I have one more audition left, like a letter to myself, you know. I, and then now, you know, to see the finale, it's, I've gone, I've come so far. It's really nice of you to ask me, you know, to walk down memory lane because it seems like all a dream. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and, and like I said, like, I'm still a Batman fangirl. I am really famous to be the cast member on set who, like, I'm, fervently on eBay, like bidding for <laughs> awesome Batman gear. Like I've got tons of vintage jackets with Batman and it's like awesome. original Warner brother wear, you know, I, and I, you know, get them for cast gift, gifts and stuff like that. But they're very often like, Nicole, is that another jacket? I'm like, yeah, is it a joke? <laughs> I feel like I'm on a sports team. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was clearly the show for you that there's no doubt yeah. about that. So yeah. if, if people haven't checked out the show yet, what are some big things you want them to think about once they do hop on board? Yeah, so Batwoman is an awesome show. Uh, Bruce, in our Gotham, Bruce has gone. He's been missing for a while, sort of. And, and Kate Kane, his cousin, is called to take his place. She fails, she's not Bruce. She gets back up again and she figures out how to do it her own way. You know, with the help of Luke Fox, they create a brand new suit for her based on Bruce's old suit. It now fits a woman. I am her stepsister and our villain Alice is sort of revealed to be her twin sister. Mm -hmm. So at the heart of this show is sort of this jealousy, uh, dangerous sister triangle and and we have villains sort of, sometimes our show is like a villain procedural. We've got amazing villains. Um, Gabriel Mann, amazing. He comes in and plays Hush. We've got all these incredible villains. And then we've got sort of the interpersonal drama that ensues. So yeah, you guys have to check it out and, and, and let me know <laughs> what you think. A lot of good stuff going on in this one. Nicole, thanks so much for hanging out. Be well, and we'll talk Thank to you down so the road, much. right? This was amazing. Thank you.